Are you ready for an EMP or a nuclear attack? Is your ham shack going to survive? Let's talk about that. Hi everybody, welcome back to Ham Shack TV. I'm your host Josh, AA4WX. Thank you so much for being here and thank you so much for your support. If you're new here, and like my content, hit the subscribe button down below, as well as the notification bell next to it. Both things certainly help the channel. And uh, be sure, if you think this information is useful, share it out with your friends, family, uh, other ham radio folks. And this, the content of this video isn't just about ham radio. It's applicable to CBs, uh, GMRS radios, any real kind of electronics. Uh, so let's talk about that. Uh, first off, real quick, this video is brought to you by the Ham Shack TV store. Go to Amazon.com forward slash shop slash Ham Shack TV for the Ham Shack TV store brought to you by Amazon.com. We've got all kinds of great stuff there, prepper gear, radios, you name it. Go check it out. We've got antennas, uh, coax, connectors, digital and analog. Go check all of it out. So let's talk about this. First, let's talk about what an EMP is. An EMP is an electromagnetic pulse. Electromagnetic pulse. Now, there are two common, well, so, semi-common things uh, that create the EMP. And one of them is natural, and that's a solar flare. We have these all the time, normally not strong enough to cause damage to electronics. However, they do happen all the time. Also, the other uh, thing, and it's a little bit more uh, unfortunate, is nuclear detonations and nuclear weapons. Those, of course, are man-made. Uh, so two opportunities to have an EMP. Um, so keep that in mind. The threat is if there is an EMP and you are within range of it, you may not have physical damage on the ground. However, your radios, your electronics, things like that, if they're not properly protected, they're not going to work. And let's talk about that even further. Electricity, the electrical grid, will sustain significant damage in the event of an EMP, uh, whether it's solar or nuclear in nature. Um, so first and foremost, have a backup uh, source for electricity, whether that's solar, whether that's a generator, have a backup source for electricity. That's your number one thing. Now, how do you protect your equipment? Well, there are some misconceptions uh, about EMPs. Um, if you see only military grade protection works, that's not true. That's not true. There's plenty of stuff out there that are not military grade. And there's things that you can do in your home with normal stuff normal things that you would have in your kitchen to protect against an EMP. It is important also to note that they're not rare. We have the solar flares all the time, and those do create an electromagnetic pulse. Now, again, they're not typically strong enough uh, to cause damage, but the potential is there. So basically what happens with these electromagnetic pulses is they, they generate so much energy that it burst all that energy back down the power grid and into your electronics and overloads them and fries them, basically. Um, there are ways to protect things. And the first and foremost thing to do is consider a Faraday cage. And you can use a Faraday cage on your radio, on your, uh, on all kinds of different things. Um, you know, TV's probably not going to be a huge thing when it comes to uh, an EMP, because frankly, the television station is probably not going to work. Um, however, you know, a battery-operated AM/FM radio—that's something uh, that you would you would want to have uh, protected. Your ham radio equipment, uh, things like these little HTs—you can put this in a Faraday cage really easily. And you know what? You can make a Faraday cage on your own. Super easy, super cheap. So. When I say you can make them on your own, did you know it's as simple as aluminum foil? So, you do want to make sure that the thing is sealed. If you do use aluminum foil and wrap a radio in aluminum foil or something like that, you do want to make sure 
uh, that it is sealed. You don't want any way for any of the electromagnetic pulse to be able to penetrate that aluminum foil. I personally would do several layers, just to be honest with you. Uh, but there's something even easier. You can use a steel trash can. Steel trash can, put the lid on it, it's good to go. Hide that in your bunker, hide that in your garage, whatever. Your equipment's ready to go if you need it. But remember, you've got to have a way to power that stuff. Battery, solar, generator, you name it, something like that. Uh, that's, 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 you're going to have to have power if this were to happen. Um, you want to make sure that your cables are shielded. So if you use equipment commonly, make sure that your coaxial cable is shielded properly. You want to also ensure proper grounding as well. Uh, surge protectors and EMP shields, those are commercially available. Uh, you know, make sure that you're, you're, you've got surge protectors on all your equipment. That will help as well. Not only in the event of an EMP, but also during severe weather. Lightning runs in, your radio is not going to get fried by a lightning strike, typically if you have a surge protector on it. Uh, so keep, keep that in mind. Uh, you'll also want backup equipment. Now, if you're like me and don't have a huge budget, you know, I don't have a budget to have multiple HF rigs. I have my 7300. That's it. Um, if you are able to and you are a prepper, you'll want to have your backup rig as well as the antenna and however you're going to power it in some sort of a protection. That way it is ready to go if you need it. Um, HTs. HTs are going to be useful. 146.52, 446-flat. Those are your national calling frequencies. Should this happen, actually happen one day, those are where you're going to want to try to find people if you need help. Uh, so have HTs, uh, you know, packed away in, in these Faraday, uh, Faraday cages. Also, there are commercially available Faraday bags. I will put a link to those in the description, and we'll also have them on the Hamshack TV store. Uh, let's talk about grounding systems. Uh, grounding is super, super important. You want to make sure that you have proper bonded grounding. You know, if you live in an older house like I do, my house was built in 1952, and it's built, been built onto a couple of times, not by me, but by the prior owners of this house. Uh, grounding codes have changed dramatically over the years. You want to make sure that your home is grounded properly, not only for this event, but it's really good sense for, you know, preventing an electrical fire and things like that. Uh, so make sure your grounding's in good shape. I know I had some good friends, I'll shout out uh, N1ESK, um, and uh, also, uh, Lord, I'm forgetting, forgetting some names. Um, uh, Mr. Khan, uh, N9KMY, as well as uh, uh, Tim Montgomery. Uh, those guys came together. I don't understand, or I didn't at the time understand anything about grounding. Those guys came together. We got a plan in, in place, and now my house is properly grounded. So make sure that you are grounding your house properly. Let me know down in the comments if you want to see my grounding system. Uh, the final big step is you want to test and maintain. Uh, regularly test your stored equipment and ensure it functions post EMP. Don't be confused by the word post EMP. You know, if you're going to purchase specific Faraday bags, pull them out of the bags once in a while, fire them up, test them, go do a POTA activation or something like that just to make sure everything's in good working order. Uh, you'll you'll want to do that for sure. Uh, and routinely inspect your Faraday cage. Make sure that there's no no tears, no bends, no rips, no you know whatever you're using. Make sure that it is regularly inspected. Also inspect your grounding system and make sure your grounding system is still done properly. Um, there are um, some first steps to ex assess and reestablish communications. Again, we talked about this a minute ago. Simple HT. This is a little bit of a higher end HT. This is the uh, ICOM ID52. Uh, that's a little higher end for most of you. A simple $35 HT like this right here will suit you just fine. Of course, the battery's dead. Every time I dem want to demo this thing, it's dead. Uh, that's just because I failed to plug it up. A little simple bow thing. This will do you just great. 
uh, for basic local communications. If an EMP was to happen, you'll want to go to 146.52 or 446 even and get on there and call for help, listen for activities. I assure you, most ham radio operators will be going to those frequencies if this were to happen. Um, let's see here. Do want to emphasize it is very important to have a community network like ham radio operators, like GMRS operators. What will the laws look like if this happens? Well, we all do know that in the event of a life or death emergency and threat to property, you can pick up the mic whether you're licensed or not. I don't care if it's GMRS, I don't care if it's ham radio, I don't care if it's a police radio, fire radio, whatever. If it means your life and your death or the destruction of your property, you need to pick up that mic if you have no other options. Of course, if you have a cell phone in your pocket and it works, use that. Uh, if you don't have a license. However, in the event of something like this, no one's going to give a flying fart in space about um, about being able to have a license for that. And we've had some conversations here on Ham Shack TV about um, that particular issue. Will licenses be revoked? Who knows? And uh, let's talk about that real quick before I go. I uh, just want to follow up on, on those cases uh, that people have been talking about. We don't know what that's going to look like. And the thing is, the United States government, if they chose to suspend or revoke ham radio licenses in more time, they're not doing that to make you bored as heck. What they're doing that for is to prevent uh, enemies uh, from listening in to what's happening here in the United States. Um, that's going to be your, you do what you've got to do. I'm a law-abiding citizen, so uh, just want to remind you folks, be careful in the comments. Um, you never know who's watching. But um, thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate you being here. Uh, if you're watching this before Christmas, uh, at the time of this recording, it is... Friday, December the 20th. I uh, just want to say thank you so much for your support this year. We've had this channel up since August, and here we are in December, and uh, we're approaching 3,300 subscribers in a very quick fashion. I can't thank you guys enough. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, looking forward to some big things in 2025 uh, with this channel. We've got a few trips planned. Uh, those of you that have been following, uh, you, you know what's coming up. So uh, looking forward to that. Hey, if you need to get your ham radio license, don't forget, Ham Shack uh, TV has, a, uh, has an agreement with Ham Radio Prep. HamRadioPrep.com is your number one source to get your ham radio license. They have extra class, they have general class, and they have technician class courses, and they will help you pass that test. And if you use my coupon code HamShackTV at checkout, you get an additional 10% off their already great prices. So go check out my friends at hamradioprep.com. Use coupon code HAMSHAGTV. Guys, until next time, again, thank you. Merry Christmas, 73s. This is AA4WX, WSCB 693.